to the 40th episode of the sixth season of the Ubuntu podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk to Andrew Greg- Gregory about magazine Linux Voice, and we've got another time-saving tip, and we'll read your feedback. If you're listening or watching live, hiya! Hiya! <laughs> you can send us messages using the chat facility on the website and in the IRC channel. I'm Laura, and joining me are Tony. Good evening. Alan. Hello. And Mark. Hiya! So, That's a silly voice you've got there, Mark. Mark, what have you been doing? I've been to Spain and then to Germany. Wow. For a minute, I thought you were going to say space. <laughs> I've yes. been no, that's to the space. other Mark. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the richer Mark. <laughs> <laughs> In more ways than one. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, travelling around for work. Um, I've been very tired and talking a lot, and my voice I spent most of yesterday recovering from a lot of the talking. So you came down here to talk some more? Yes. I was quite worried that it wasn't going to recover in time, but here it is. If Just. You, if your advice goes deeper when it's hoarse, how deep does it go? Uh, pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it didn't really go deep. It just went very quiet and painful. Oh. Oh. Helen. Hello. I, I've been uh, uh, playing a game, which apparently is really, really old, but I only discovered it this week, called Tetranet. It's a multiplayer Tetris. It's oh, wow. brilliant. It's online multiplayer Tetris. How you does that work? Up to six players. You each have your own like Tetris like column, mm-hmm. and the pieces fall down. And when you win a line, it distributes some little letters into the squares that you have <laughs> remaining, right? If you then clear one of those lines that's got the letters in, you can use those letters as weapons against the other players. So, for example, mm-hmm. you could add, add lines to someone oh, else's yeah. or you could explode their thing so the the pieces fly around all over the place it's a bit like battle mode in guitar hero right i guess yeah yeah i guess so but with blocks um and okay. you can also clear your own thing and it's got a team play as well so you can play like you know three against three or something like that and i've been playing against a bunch of people who hang out on a mumble server used by the linux action show guys at jupiter broadcasting oh yes um yeah it's been really good fun tell me what have you been up to oh lots of doctor who stuff Ooh. why surprise that? me well it's the 50th anniversary of doctor really? who coming up wow. which in the uk you probably can't have avoided because it's been on tv and things <laughs> um but we went to see uh, an adventure in space and time uh, yes. a couple of weeks ago a preview of that at the bfi and uh, heading off to uh, Doctor Who convention, official celebration, and all sorts of things, um, and being on the Doctor Who podcast, yeah, again, uh, again, again, but my first kind of is that of proper why we appearance. weren't on Wednesday this week? Were you moonlighting? No, <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. we, we weren't on Wednesday because everybody other than me was away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, it would have been the Tony show, which many people would have preferred, I think, um, but. And Mark was yeah. away, Alan was doing some sort of UDS thing, um, and Laura was away for work as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it would have just been me, little old me, oh. I was here. What about you, Laura? What have you been doing? I've been playing Tiny Death Star. Is that on Linux? On Android. What is it? That's Linux. It's... It's Tiny Tower with all the graphics replaced with Star Wars What's characters. Tiny Tower? And appara- That's it. apparently there's fewer, there's on, there's different types of levels and Tiny Tower doesn't go into the basement. So it is different. <laughs> it's slightly different. Yeah. What's yes. Tiny Tower? I have no idea. I've it's never heard of it. It's a game where you waste vast amounts of time yep. building a tower and you build these floors and get uh, employees it's to like work. It's like Sim and, Tower. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. it does sound a lot like Tiny Death Star. Only in this case, <laughs> it's a Death Star. <laughs> um, and the emperor that well Darth Vader has economic plans and so he basically y- he wants you to build the economy of the Death Star and it needs to be self-sustaining and you know you can build recreation and retail right. areas and this is all crowbarred like in this. because that's exactly how Tiny Tower works but right. the emperor sets you tasks as well Wow. Right, and these do, are the missions. Do you have to time. turn young Skywalker to the dark side? No, he pops up from time to time. So do they to, like, make him. a restaurant? Do, do they try yeah. to destroy the planet Tenuous? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that should... Darth Vader or Jeff, his brother? Yeah, it's finished his uh... Anyway, let's get on with the show. <laughs> joined on the line by Andrew Gregory from uh, Linux Voice. Uh, hello, Andrew. How are you? Hello. Uh, not bad, thanks. I've had my first proper meal in three days. I'm round at my dad's house. Is, is this uh, what your Indiegogo campaign is for, to get you more food? <laughs> 
Um, so tell us about tell us about your uh, your Indiegogo campaign. What's what's going on? Well, we we used to work for a magazine called Linux Formats, which uh, is a magazine about Linux and free software and other things. Um, you you may remember us from our excellent Has Ubuntu Lost It cover feature, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the uh, favourite Linux podcasts feature, which we were uh, left out of. Left I out of, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well. We, we also do a podcast, and we were left out of that feature. <laughs> Shocking. I think there was a commissioning error there. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but then uh, we, we all quit from that because we want to do something slightly different. But it's, it's going to be the same sort of blend of content, you know, lots of tutorials and rainy day projects and things to mess about and, and fix things with Linux and software and, you know, it's free and it's open, so it's, it's an open invitation to hack about and break things in an entertaining way. But the, the, dif- the difference is really is that um, we're going to give 50% of our profits away to free software and hackery type events and programs and organizations. And after, we're going to license all of our old content out under the Creative Commons by share alike license. So, sorry, when you say old content, you mean new old content, not content you made for the old magazine? No, that, that old content belongs to Future Publishing oh. and they'll, they'll keep on reselling that okay. for as long as they can. So with, with the money which you're giving away, how do you decide um, who is worthy of your 50%, as it were? Is that going to be um, just you'll choose every now and then who you're going to give it away to or is there going to be some reader involvement in the, in the process or do people bid for the it, money? It would have been a lot neater if we could have just decided. <laughs> Then we'd have been able to, to release an update every so often on Indiegogo and, and make us look like really good guys. <sighs> and instead, we're going to let the readers choose. So yeah. over the next few months, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be running features about uh, various causes. I've just, I was on the phone earlier to a woman from Young Rewired State, uh-huh. which, is, you know, which is excellent, teaching kids. It's not you know, really Linux-y specific, mm. but it's... It's part of our aims, you know, it's getting people into this really cool, exciting field that, that we all love and we, we want to share that. So you're, so you're doing pretty well on the campaign. Uh, you're over 50%, is that right? We're tantalising the close. We're, we're at like 58.6% <laughs> or something. Ah, cool. And but after only 10 days. And is it a, uh, one where, is it a campaign where you have to get full funding to get the uh, the amount or do you get something how how have you set that up it's fixed funding exactly as you say um i i don't really think it's fair to take people's money and not not be able to guarantee that we'd be able to give them something in return and so if if you do get the full funding and it's you know all systems go you, you go into production for the magazine. I assume you have some content for the first magazine, given there's a very nice, pretty uh, front cover uh, in the video. Um, where would someone be able to get the magazine? Is it subscription, postal subscription only? Will it be in shops? How, how's that going to work? Well, you'll, you'll be able to buy it. You'll definitely be able to buy it directly from us uh, by a subscription, and there's going to be a digital edition, which is, at the moment, that's just a, a straight PDF, because mm-hmm. that's just a the easiest way we have to to bring the content out to market. Um, but we are we are working on getting the magazine into W. H. Smith. Cool. And if we can manage that for the first issue, I'll be absolutely made up because <laughs> that's like the biggest UK magazine retailer and we sort of we have, we've got we've got big plans. We're starting small but <laughs> we'd like to end up really big. So in terms of the actual you know, what we could expect from a print edition, is it going to be very much like we we're used to seeing a magazine with you know a cover disc adverts and various bits and bobs in between, or is it just going to be? Is it is it just going to be? I think I think by, by no, bits and bobs you mean high quality content. High quality enough. content. Well, that's the point. Is it is it going to be just the content if you're producing it yourselves, or is there going to be no, the the full package, as it were? Well, it is. Well, we we produced the full package. That, that was us making Linux format. So right. the, the quality won't suffer at all. In fact, if anything, it'll get better because mm-hmm. we're, we'll have no, no layers of middle management telling us what to do. Um, the feedback we've had so far on Indiegogo was that not many people actually want a DVD. Right, okay. Um, 
we, we can just eliminate a layer of hassle for ourselves and, cool. and pass the savings on to the reader. And will we still have 14-page uh, adverts for one-on-one -on -one hosting? Because <laughs> <laughs> I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should pay extra, Mark, for, the, for a special edition. <laughs> the, the best one was a, an insert for, for a natural erectile enhancer. <laughs> Wow. I, I All right. forget the name, but there was, there was some excellent user testimony in, in that advert. <laughs> yeah, they clearly know their market share, don't they? Yeah, they, they do a great job. So the, the common question that, that I'm sure you've, you've fielded numerous times is, um, which, which comes up whenever I talk to people about the magazine, is, is print dead? Is it, is it actually a viable medium for you guys to create a sustainable magazine going forward? Um, not indefinitely, but if it's sustainable for the next 10 years, then that's, that's good enough for me. Um, we've, on Indiegogo, we've been seeing our, our most popular single offering is, is the digital subscription. Right. That's, that's um, outsold. Well, that's, that's sold the last month as everything else put together. So it's about half and half. So half, half digital subs and half everything else. So as long as we can offer that, then that's great. But um, we know, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, so I, I probably better not, but we know how much Linux format turned over from its print sales, and we know how much profit it made from its print sales. Right. And I would love to take that and give 50% of it to Oddcamp ESS, Free Software Foundation. <laughs> We'd love that too. <laughs> Suck up. Um, so I, I guess the question is, are you looking to essentially take over that market that Linux format had, and I guess maybe drive them out of business, I don't know, but <laughs> it, it's going to be a fairly limited market and not room for an infinite number of Linux magazines in it. So you're going to be fighting for quite a niche market share already. Yeah, yeah, pretty much that, that is the plan. So why are people going to come over to you rather than stay with Linux format? Because Linux format is continuing. There's a new editorial team in place. Yeah, it is. Um, when we eventually get on the shelves, we want to be, well, I, I just think we'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, one major difference is that Linux, Linux Voice is going to be 14 pages longer than Linux Format. Linux Format had, a, had its page count cut uh -huh. twice in the last year, uh -huh. which was nice. Um, and coincidentally, has today announced that it will be paying a dividend of 0 0.2 pence a share to its shareholders. Wow. So I, I see that as I see that as money taken or value taken directly out of the reader's pocket and put into the shareholders' pockets, and I don't really like that. So, so is this the content that? So, if if we're saying you know you're going to be side by side with with Linux format on the shelf in WH Smith, that would be an ideal situation, and um, you know potentially that's a good thing for both of you because it drives competition. You're both going to have to fight for that for that market. What? What would you say you guys are going to do which would make me want to grab your magazine instead of any other Linux magazine? Well, there'll be the community focus, of course. Um, we're not just going to let people, let our readers choose blind about what, where the profit's going to we, we want to really push and help promote causes you know, like, like on camp. That's, that just... I don't know why, but for some reason that's at the, at the forefront of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed it was on the front cover of the mock-up as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I had cartable, so I couldn't get to the camp this year. That was quite annoying. Um, but the, the other thing, I think, is just the, the quality of the content. That's going to be our, our main selling point. You know, we've, we've been making Linux format for years. Mike Saunders is with us, and he's been writing for Linux format since issue one. Um, since he was about 12, I think. <laughs> um, I've been on, working on it for nine years. Um, ben Everard, he's our technical editor. He, he wrote the excellent Hack the Web and Beat the CIA feature. Is that the one that got you pulled off the shelves in Smith? Got us pulled off the shelves of Barnes & Noble. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Oh, that's, that's marketing that you can't buy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we were ecstatic about that. But our bosses were really angry. <laughs> again, again, some sort of disconnect.
Jason Eck there. <laughs> um, so well, one of the things I've always found about um, like tech magazines is because the world of tech moves so fast, if you try and report news in print, then by the time the magazine goes to print, you've already heard all the news online. So does your will, will not being part of a big publisher... Um, help you sort of publish more quickly and keep more up to date or is that just sort of the nature of the beast when it comes to doing a magazine? I think it's, it's the nature of things that you can't, you can't stay up to date when, when compared with, with websites. And there's no point even trying. You, you, you're trying to compete on a different set of values. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, you know, Mitch Kapoor says getting information out of the internet is like drinking out of a fire hydrant. <laughs> So we aim to to bring just the best and the coolest things that we've found to the readers. Right. And plus a lot of it is, is generated by us. Um, because Linux is really hard, um, there's there's not a lot of... Well, there's there's lots of internet of, of Linux information out there, but a lot of it is, is scattered around in different places, and yeah. some of it's not written very well. It's written for, for people who are quite techy already. And if we can make things more accessible and more fun, then you know, I think that's all we need to do. So yourself, Andrew, Mike, and and Ben um, are on the team. Are there any? Do you do you create all the content yourselves, or are you are you looking to get content from um, community writers or from somewhere else? Yep, um, it'd be mostly us dreaming up the ideas. Um, we we're still in contact with all of the old freelancers that worked for us on, on Linux format. And we've, we've already had quite a few offers of contributions from from the community, from people that have looked at the Indiegogo page and thought, oh, that's a good idea. Um, you know, people are just offering to work for us for free, which is absolutely splendid wow. stuff. But if they wanted to be paid, if you if they provide high-quality articles, and you're, I take it you are going to pay contributors? Yes, of course we are. Right. This... There is a school of thought that says you can get people to write stuff for free and they'll do it just for the thrill of seeing their name in print. But I don't really go along with that. I think if you've done a good job, you deserve to get paid for it. Right. So how many subscriptions do you need to have to make Linux Voice a ongoing commercial concern, as you say, for maybe 10 years or whatever? Well, I think we, we said at the outset that we need a minimum of 2,000 to get going. Um keep it going as a going concern um, I guess about 4,000 right globally uh, is that 4,000 globally uh, print and digital or is that just print it's print and digital so 4,000 4, subscribers is enough to make sure that you guys the, the three people who work on it mostly can be paid and uh, contributors can be paid for f- freelance work and what have you and it, Contributors will get paid before we get paid. Right. <laughs> That's laudable, but uh, I suspect your mortgage company might not be <laughs> quite as keen about that. But I I thought... know, my girlfriend's got a good job. Uh, <laughs> very understanding. Oh, what it is to be a kept man. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, but 4,000 is the magic number where you need to be to, to make it all work. Yeah. We, Linux Format had 22,000 readers, and we are hoping that we can get uh, two or three thousand at first to join mm. us to help support the Indiegogo campaign, and then as, as time goes on, we'll expand that until if it's after two or three years, we've got eight thousand readers. Then that'll be that's, that's plenty. That'll be great. And have you already got the as well as the content? Obviously, there is something else that you know pays for the thing is the advertising in between. Have you already got uh, advertisers signed up? No, we don't. Um, Advertising was, was a very... We're, we're, more, we're following the Linux format model pretty much exactly, but we're doing it better. We're not reinventing any wheels. We're just making a shinier wheel. <laughs> um, <laughs> Linux format had hardly any advertising in, and as you say, the, um, a lot of it wasn't best targeted to our readers, so we can probably live without 16-page one-on-one adverts. Although, if, if anyone from one-on-one is listening, <laughs> <laughs> wants to give us money, um, give me a call. Awesome. Excellent. Well, it's, uh, when, when does the uh, campaign end? It ends on the 23rd of December. Oh, so we've got, uh, we've got a little while left. Yeah, over a month. Awesome. Um, with, with about half of the, of the campaign, half of the money already raised. 
Right. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and uh, we'll put a link in the show notes to uh, uh, to the Indiegogo campaign, and uh, wish you all the best. Uh, fingers crossed you hit the target by the 23rd. Thanks a lot for having me. And, and by the way, the um, the conclusion on has Ubuntu lost it was, no, it hasn't lost it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> you can come on again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Cheers, then. Cheers. Bye. 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 some command line love and command line love this week <laughs> I can see you a pregnant pause I think <laughs> I don't yes. think any of us knew how to react to that excuse me I'll have some tea yes it's so deep you're now carrying my child um, wow well, that, I could have worded Let's that go on. Yes. anyway uh, so command line love this week is um a, a way of finding long commands which you've got in your history, like you have to do sometimes with like lots of options in, be able to refer back to them without actually having to remember the whole command. So what you do is you type in your long command and then before you run it, you put a hash to do a comment and then you put some easy to remember label. And then if you want to get it back, you do control R to search through your history and type the name of the label and then the whole big command will come up. Yeah, it's quite cool. That's quite cunning. Yeah, I quite like that. And that means that unlike with an alias, where you can sort of save a short alias to a big command, it means it will bring the whole command back so you can fiddle with options and change file names and stuff. I described it earlier as a hashtag for a a command. Oh, how we laughed. Alan didn't like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So the problem I have is not with that. It's more the fact that I type lots and lots of commands on the command line and sometimes they've gone off the top or I've got multiple terminals and they don't all save to the same place. Mm. I'd love a solution to that. I want a much bigger history that's got every command I ever typed since the dawn of man and I want it to store them from every terminal that I've Mm. Um, that I've typed stuff in on this on this machine because I find sometimes I know full well I've typed a certain command in the last like yeah. forty eight hours and yeah. I do a history and I grep for whatever I don't I tend not to use Control R for some reason and it just doesn't find it and I don't know why so if anyone knows why that is and how to fix it then email podcast at one two uk dot org thank you very much well I know I know why that is why because all of your terminal instances write to the same history file and um, if you open one type some commands, open another one, type some commands, and then close the first one. It'll write its history to the file and you're done. It doesn't then, append as you go? No. That's rubbish. Oh. No, exactly. So it only writes on, basically it writes on exit. So if you have concurrent terminal sessions and then you exit in a different random order, you'll end up with essentially whichever is the last one you quit writing its uh, stuff to the history file. Um, well, that sucks. Yeah. So, But if there is a good solution, I think we'd all be interested in hearing that. Yes. It's time for your feedback, and first up we have a nice little message from Ivan Pejic, who emailed to say... This might help Laura, and he's given a link to udacity.com for a a beginner's Java course. And is Udacity one of these MOOCs that I hear about? What? I don't know. Massively open online courses. I think it is. I think it might be, yeah. They're the hot new thing in e-learning. Yeah. Really? MOOCing. Actually, there's the hot about two years ago, maybe not as good as we thought thing, but they still exist. They're they're basically sort of academic type of courses, computer science, but any subject, there are a lot of computer science ones where people can just sign up and do classes and things online. Commercial, some are free. Yeah, and get a real certificate from a real actual university. See, I found... I, it says you have no credit. I don't care about the certificate part, but um, I found a cool website that I'm actually finding really useful, and that's practiceit.org, and it's practice with an S, and it's dash it.org. And it's um, some professor at a university in the US has written this website, mm-hmm. and um, his RAs uh, maintain it. And basically, it's just lots of little problems, and you do the thing and it tells you if you're right or wrong oh cool is it just for java then just for java and it works i think it's in parallel with a, a particular but oh, what are you doing to my cat <laughs> <laughs> one-handed badly with, yeah. the, 
poor thing. With video evidence. <laughs> yeah. With, um, where was I? Oh, uh, no, oh, Java. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. And so it, um, it, yeah, it's just Java and it's really, <laughs> really helpful. No, it's, it's based on a book. Oh, okay, and I don't cool. have the book, but I spend time but now you're not gonna Googling. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not, you, you really need the book, yeah. really. But yeah. what I've got instead is just I Google all the, the keywords that come up and work out what the question's asking me and then answer right. it. Oh, yeah. It's really good. An extra challenge to your, your layer. Oh. Mark, what's up next? Jezra emailed. When I use a web browser, I expect to be able to upload a file to a website. Unfortunately, doing such a thing in Firefox OS phone isn't possible. Oh. Yes, we were talking about Firefox OS a couple of episodes ago, weren't we? What, what would you upload from a phone? A uh, photo that you took? Uh, well, A file that you downloaded? Uh, an audio thing you recorded onto your phone? Yeah, what? okay. I was Go trying on. to think, figure out the use case. I just use Dropbox. Because, uh, yeah... You might want to set your profile picture on a website. Oh, yeah. That's usually a file upload dialogue, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to upload your homework to uh, VLE. Uh, the reason why I ask is because it doesn't work in uh, Ubuntu phone either, I don't think. Um, uh, we don't have a file upload thing in the browser. I was just trying to figure out why you would why you would do that. No, but there yeah, aren't really any good use cases for it. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. We won't bother implementing that. Well, well I mean... On Ubuntu, you could potentially get around it if you could. No, no, actually, no, I'll stop talking. That's nonsense. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> you could potentially get around it if you use a different phone. <laughs> mm. So, Paul emailed. There are many of us who, for various reasons, need a larger cursor size. Should be simple. However, I've tried mightily with Ubuntu 1204 and now 1310 to figure out how to get a larger mouse pointer. I've been absolutely defeated by Ubuntu's Byzantine organisation and or lack thereof. I've tried using DebConf Editor and Unity Tweak. You can enlarge the cursor pointer using these tools, but it works only when the cursor is o over open windows of programs. When on the desktop and otherwise clicking around Ubuntu, it reverts to the tiny default pointer. I've not been able to find a way simply to have a large pointer everywhere. Any thoughts would be appreciated. By the way, mainline operating systems have one simple click fixes. Have simple one click fixes. I'm sorry. Uh, a similar approach would be appreciated by many of us using Ubuntu. Mm. There's a, there's a package called something like um, Big Desktop Cursor or something, which is apparently a big cursor. But I installed it and it doesn't. I can't find what it does. <laughs> You still had a little cursor. This, this was me. I searched. I did. Oh, I wonder what happens if I search for big cursor in the software center, and it came up with this package, but yeah. it doesn't appear to do anything. Hmm. 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 Mm. No idea. If you know, send us an email or a tweet or something. Yeah. Daniel Niles, uh, who is Esoteric Moment on Twitter, tweeted us. I actually love the weird pre-recorded "We need you, yes you" <laughs> message. <laughs> it fits in with the old-timey music so well. Yay. Excellent. Well, Danielle, I'm about to make your day. <laughs> <laughs> the Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that pleases, puzzles, or piques you, tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. And remember, if we don't hear from you, we might not have enough content. And that can only mean one thing, more quizzes. And that's all for this episode. The next live show will be on Wednesday the 4th of December at half past eight in the evening UK time. Is that really right? Is that next Wednesday? It's, no, that's right, the 4th. Okay. We we know what we're talking about. Yeah. We? We're professionals. On we know what show. we're doing. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Half past eight in the evening, UK <laughs> time. Yes. yes. We've stopped doing those stupid uh, time zone. Just couldn't be bothered looking it all. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sure we can do... I'm sure we can come up with something. Uh, zero uh, one, zero, is zero, zero, zero one. Is that our last one next week? No, there's another one after that. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then it's Christmas. Yeah. Ooh. And then we have a break. Yeah. So we've got... Four Two. Some more episodes before a the end of the year. number of more yeah. episodes. Right. It's, uh, it's half past ten in the morning Hawaiian time. Really? Yeah. I wonder why your, your face my was glowing just standing a bit there. there. <laughs> glowing <laughs> as you... My maths prowess. What's the well name done. of the time zone in Hawaii? 
I think it's Hawaiian Standard Time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, good. Right, join us next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.